Okay, should you be taking a statin medication? Well, over 40 million Americans, you know, have been prescribed statins in an attempt to lower their cholesterol and supposedly to help prevent heart disease. Now, uh, how helpful are these statins in fighting heart disease? And what are some of the potential uh, problems with statins? And so we know that statins are a drug given to lower uh, cholesterol in the body. They do this by inhibiting uh, the liver's enzyme that is involved in endogenous production of cholesterol called hydroxymethylglutaryl coenzyme A reductase or HMG CoA reductase. That's a mouthful. A situation where people are often prescribed statins include those with diabetes, high cholesterol, or with a pre-existing condition of heart disease or stroke. Now, statins are given to these individuals in an attempt to reduce their cholesterol, which many cardiologists believe to, is to blame for the rise in heart attacks. And there are some side effects of these statin drugs uh, that are clearly uh, known about. You know, some of the most common short-term side effects include uh, headache, dizziness, nausea, uh, fatigue, brain fog, uh, muscle pain, difficulty falling or staying asleep, drowsiness, uh, digestive problems from, ranging from constipation to diarrhea. And so those are, those are some of the short-term side effects. Now, are they worth all these problems? That's up to you. Let's look at some of the long-term side effects that have been at least associated with this. And so satins can lower some of the essential nutrients in the body. Satins have been shown to deplete internal stores of various nutrients. It reduces a kidney's production of vitamin K2, which again is essential for proper blood clotting, brain function, and ironically enough, is protective against heart disease. It also lowers endogenous CoQ10 production, which is an antioxidant that your body makes and is vital to convert food into energy, uh, boost the immune system, and protect the heart. Neither of these nutrients can protect the heart if they've been depleted, obviously, by statin usage. Now, statins may uh, decrease uh, your ability to uh, produce sex hormones, and so this can cause uh, issues with erectile dysfunction, lowering testosterone in men. And in women, statins have been shown to decrease levels of DHEA, which is a precursor to other sex hormones like progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen. Uh, statins can increase your chances of getting diabetes. Now, because individuals with type 2 diabetes are more at risk of having a cardiovascular event, statins are usually given to those with type 2 diabetes in an attempt to reduce their chance of having such an event. But ironically, enough research has shown that statins can worsen insulin resistance and then increase your chance of having more type 2 diabetes. So it's kind of a catch-22. Statins can increase your risk for shingles. Anyone's ever had chicken pox can develop shingles in adulthood. The virus that causes chicken pox lays dormant in your body and is triggered by something in the environment. It is a virus that produces a very painful rash and blisters typically along the sides of your body and usually emerges in those 50 years and older. And while the cause of the virus's activation is unknown, statins have been shown to increase your chances of getting shingles. Now, statins can potentially worsen brain function. There's research that shows that statins can drastically impair memory and cognitive function and decrease quality of life. Uh, they can elevate liver enzymes. The liver, of course, has many, many functions, over 500 functions when it's overburdened, as in the case of alcohol consumption, excess sugar intake, or too many prescription drugs that release a certain enzymes. When the individual has elevated liver enzymes, it's a sign that their liver is overburdened and inflamed and possibly damaged. It can also increase your chance of getting tendinopathy. So tendinopathy is pain in the tissues around the joints or as the muscles insert into the joints. Uh, and usually can potentially result in uh, partial or full tears. Pain, inflammation, impaired mobility are a consequence of this progressively degenerative condition and statins have been strongly linked to causing ruptures and tears that come with tendinopathy. So again, now I'm not here to tell you don't take statins, but you should at least be well informed about the pros and the cons of, of this particular uh, medication. Does it really increase your risk of dying, you know, of all causes? And so there are some studies that would point to perhaps not. Now studies show that high cholesterol can be associated with actually a lower chance of all cause mortality. A 2019 study of 12,815,006 individuals found that the all cause risk of mortality was essentially inversely proportional to total cholesterol levels. That is to say, lower cholesterol in that population, particularly very low cholesterol levels, were much more correlated with uh, higher rates of death, whereas higher cholesterol up to a point was associated with lower rates of death. For participants, uh, the risk of all-cause mortality was lower at a total cholesterol of 300 than it was at 150, interestingly. Another study look at, looked at uh, 3,500 men aged 71 to 93 
and the results show that mortality increased again with lower cholesterol and mortality did not increase with elevated cholesterol. These studies indicate that cholesterol may not be the sole indicator of heart health or overall health. Uh, and while these studies can be helpful, many questions remain. Uh, what does this information mean to you? You know, it's, again, the critics of these studies will say it's, it's reverse causality. Some of these studies have been back, you know, showing 20 years earlier, low cholesterol is actually so associated with uh, uh, increased mortality. And so, uh, while there probably are some indications and statins probably have uh, helped prevent uh, deaths or heart disease in, in, in some selected cases, uh, I think those indications are probably narrower than we, than we think. I think there are perhaps other things and better things to focus on, but again, that may be harder to control with a drug and therefore they don't get as much uh, uh, press or coverage. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about that. Is there a role for statins in some cases? Should everybody be on them? Should they be in the drinking water, as I was told? As a, as a medical student many, many years ago, I remember the, 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 the uh, faculty attending said we should put statins in the drinking water because everybody has high cholesterol. And uh, I'm personally thankful we don't do that because I think there is more nuance here. All right, guys, don't forget to like, subscribe. We'll see you on the next video.